Ladies and gentlemen, it pleases me to report to the people of Florida and the nation that the long-sought cross-Florida barge canal is now well underway. At long last, all the state and federal agencies involved unanimously agreed upon one route, one plan, a toll-free, lock-type barge canal, higher than sea level. This route is the only one which has an abundance of water, unaffected by weather cycles, necessary for maintaining a depth of 12 feet. This route also requires the least amount of excavating because it makes maximum use of natural waterways, natural waterways, natural waterways, as they occur from Port Angeles on the Gulf. This is the barricade right here. The connectivity stops right here at this dam. It's like this is the end of the road. Rodman Dam has been in place now for uh, September will be 46 years. It's caused incredible damage to the entire Oklahoma system. I had a front row seat to the destruction of the Oklahoma. When I was in middle school, our school bus went by. That's when they were clearing the floodplain of the Oklahoma and building Rodman Dam and digging the Cross Florida Barge Canal. And every day, twice a day, from the windows of the bus, you could see everything that was taking place and the destruction in the floodplain and the big uh, monster uh, crusher crawler machine and huge piles of uh, timber from the, from the floodplain that were just piled up and uh, covered in diesel fuel and let those fires burn for days and days and days. I was over here in 1964. I was a college student in Palaka when LBJ flew in in a helicopter and every Democrat in Florida was out there. It was a rainy day in February. And they were stuck cars and raining. And anyway, uh, big, big to do. And then he pushed a button and the dynamite blew up. And that started the cross Florida Arch Canal. I worked all summer on the Rodman Dam. The job's not done, but I damn sure am. The water's gonna rise and the river's gonna die so we can watch that Texas oil flow by. LBJ was a great big boy. Big oil bought him like a Texas toy. They put him on a string and they told him when he could do a little something for the Texas men. They told him then that a great big ditch through the heart of Florida would make them all rich. So they conjured up the Florida Barge Canal and they brought the scrapers in. The Oklahoma River ran 10,000 years through a peaceful land From the St. John's River to the Silver Springs Snakes and the alligators ruled as kings Pushing down the trees and digging up the muck A D-9 dozer and a 10-ton truck Building up a dam just to make a big pool Where the cypress sighs and the scrub jay sings I worked all summer on the Rodman Dam The job's not done, but I damn sure am The water's gonna rise and the river's gonna die So we can watch that Texas oil flow by From early on, as soon as the Europeans invaded this part of the world, the, uh, the idea of building a canal across the peninsula has been, has been there, and the Okawaha was kind of ripe for the picking. Engineers have long dreamed of a cross-Florida canal. The early Spanish considered it almost 400 years ago. Andrew Jackson recognized its defense potential. The thing that fascinates me about the Oklahoma is the fact that its story is just so incredibly significant in, in the idea of um, 
those things like land management, water management, and then the story about what people can do, what they want to do. We as a species have developed this whole system of we have the right to do this. We've got all this. We've got the right to own property. We've got the right to work the land. We've got the right to water and, and, and all this, you know, that we have these inalienable rights. What, what's wrong with the idea of considering that natural systems have inalienable rights? Why does this river not have the right to run free? You've also got the stories of these people who grew up on the river, who loved the river, lived on the river, lived by the river, lived through the river, and were, were who were linked spiritually, economically, and you see how the needs of others change their lives so quickly. It was interesting through the Barge Canal era to grow up with parents with different opinions. Um, my dad had this idea that this was an improvement. It would uh, drain uh, wetlands and we would have this uh, great navigation channel, you know, and I as a child, I'm hearing what my mom is, oh, it's her beautiful playground she grew up in. She was out hunting and fishing with her family and she would take me and my little sister in diapers and my older sister and we would go out and every weekend we went out in the woods and she was pointing out trees. She was pointing out, look at this and remember this. My mom tells me that catfish would come up so thick they'd turn sections of the river black. They would come up shoulder to shoulder. I'd like that vision again. I think we owe that um, to nature. It, it just makes no sense to keep something that was a boondoggle from the get-go. All agencies said it shouldn't be there. All agencies agree to this day it needs to go. The Ocklawaha River has had many insults by people, and she's been able to bear up and recover. Didn't, didn't really phase her too much. We took her trees down, she grew some more. We tried to shorten her up, take some bends out, move her over to high ground. She was fine with that. We got water for both. Um, but when they put a dam across her, it was just like putting a throat, your foot across her throat, choking her down. And you know, Mother Nature's ready to do this. Just get out of her way, get off her throat, let her, let her go. But now they've dammed me and they've drained me so low. They suck me dry in the caverns below. Too many people know water to take They've given me a way for progress's sake I guess I'll just evaporate and return to the air I might be a cloud in the heaven up there I might just end up a nice foggy dew My swamp's disappearing and I am too I was the old Ocklawaha I was a poor old Yeah, the dam has to be breached. There are no fish left in Silver Spring. I mean, eventually they all die off when they can't migrate. Mullet migrate, <clears throat> channel cat migrate, manatee, all those things migrate up in there and they cannot migrate with that dam there. They can't do it. This river doesn't have any friends. It's the poor river. There's not another one like it. <clears throat> you know, it has so much history. It has so much significance. It's amazing how a small special interest group like Save Rock can do so much, but if you think about old Senator George Kirkpatrick was a bass fisherman, all right? That's all it took for them to convince him, we've got to have that pool. We've got to do 120 miles an hour across that pool when we have these tournaments. And these tournaments are going to make a lot of money. Well, they don't make money. Those guys come from everywhere in the world to those tournaments. They probably bought their fuel in Wisconsin. You know, they probably bring their cases of beer in with them. I don't know. But I know this. Here's what I do know. 
the fishing supply places around Palaka, near Rodman, one by one have gone out of business over these years, right? And the pool is still there. It's a monument to those people. Um, and I understand, you know, they, they spent taxpayer dollars. The people in this area have come to love this reservoir, and I have great sympathy. Um, they've been through one major uh, loss in their life, uh, the same loss that I felt, and I think that there are a lot of people here. I don't think, I know that there are a lot of people here who um, have shared with me that uh, they don't want to lose another, what they see as a functioning ecosystem. They're not interested in the politics. All they know is they had to get over, they had to grieve for one loss. They don't want to grieve through another loss. People often wonder what it would look like if they removed the reservoir and how the wildlife in the forest would respond to that. But I think it's pretty apparent from the drawdowns they do every few years when the aquatic vegetation gets thick, they do these drawdowns. She immediately goes back into repair and she starts to flush out uh, herself by the, the current speed increases, the gradient changes, you know, you got a pool full like this and then you start to pull it down, the river's just kicking through there. The sand is blowing out, the bends are starting to spin deeper. During these drawdowns, it was amazing about how quickly the river will regenerate and heal itself. The seeds are there. They float down that river every day. Cypress seeds and all these other seeds. The exposed ground starts to sprout immediately. There's all kinds of seeds out there just ready to sprout. This is like a, a sleeping dragon, just not doing anything. There's still a river there. It's not that there's the river's gone. I mean, when you go to the drawdowns, you see the, the river's there. It, it runs and it's happy as a lark when it's, when it's let run free. It's just ready to go, I think. It's just waiting for that water and the free-flowing stream again. It's that free flow of water, that return of all of these floodwaters to the river channel and the restoration of the wetlands on either side of that channel that will be the ecological restoration of the Aklawaha. We already have below the Kirkpatrick Dam, about 8,000 acres of stressed bottomland hardwoods that do not get enough water. And then we have another 7,000 or 8,000 acres above the dam that have too much water. And they've been, a lot of them have been killed. So we're talking about, as a minimum, we've got 15,000 acres of important wetlands, all that habitat, all that water cleansing power that could be harnessed to improve the environment, improve the St. John's River. Uh, but it's got to be restored. This is the longest running environmental issue in the entire state of Florida. And it's the simplest one to remedy. All we need to do is dig that dirt out of the river channel. The river channel is still there. It was not channelized. It was not um, dredged. All in all, this is a very simple restoration project. It simply means getting the dirt out of the river channel and letting nature take its course. Some wetland restoration projects are very hard, difficult and expensive. This is a very simple restoration project. We make a 2,000 foot hole in the dam. We don't disturb the fishermen that have their facilities here. The fishing would increase. You'd have in the neighborhood of 75 or 80 miles of free flowing rivers supporting uh, 10 times more fish. And it might support as many as two or 300 manatees and the adjacent populations of bear and river otter and deer and alligators would all be probably on a larger scale because we'd improve the food supply for all those organisms. And we're not just talking uh, functions for animals, we're talking about functions for people. Fishing opportunities for Palatka, uh, all the opportunities for ecotourism, a tremendous machine, a money machine that a lot of people don't appreciate. The system could be so much more valuable if it was restored. We don't see manatees or other migratory species that we would normally see going up the river before the reservoir and the dam were there. Um, there was big runs of shad annually and catfish, different things would go up and down the river. I think the connection to, to rivers has slowly kind of 
gone. Even though when people get on the river, they feel it. It's, there's something very primal and uh, very great and wonderful about being on the water that, uh, that everybody feels. But in our daily life, we're, we've become so disconnected from, the, from rivers and waterways in general. Watery Florida is the reason it's so wonderful. Swamps are a really good thing. Being afraid of snakes and alligators, you know, those are the things that make Florida what it is and what it has always been. I want us to step away from her. When they take that dam out, whatever they've got, the little bit of breaching and clearing of the channel to make sure she's back in her proper channel, I think we need to step away. So I can stand out here in my front yard and see the fish go by. Watch them come up here to spawn. The channel cats, the white cats, the striped bass, um, and uh, any other smaller fish that's been left out. The little shad that used to come up here, um, and the fish following them and having stuff to eat. The birds coming back, ospreys and eagles. My mom has passed away last year and uh, regrettably did not see her river restored. You know, I would try to offer to take her out best I could as uh, frail as she was getting. She goes, no, nah, just try to remember it like it was. <laughs> now it didn't all happen on a single day, but the water came up and it came to stay. Turkey and the thrush took wing to the west and the panther died that highway death. And when the last of the timber had drowned, word from Washington shut it down. And not a single drop of that Texas gold crossed the lake where they laid that river to rest. Now if you don't believe this story is true, there's a great big lake that I can take you to. Locks and bridges and the dam I built, and it all means nothing when the day is through. I can't take back the sweat I shed And I can't raise up again the river it fed So I'll sing this song and pray for the best That it just might make a little bit of difference to you I worked all summer on